Your Royal Highness, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you here today at this first gathering in almost 15 months at the Wolf Institute. I can really feel my heart jump with joy looking at all of you. And what a privilege to welcome our royal patron. Thank you so much, ma'am, for coming to join us here today at this event, which marks the transition of leadership at the Institute. I'm personally very grateful because I see it as a sign in your, of your confidence in me as I take over the full executive reins from Ed, who you could all imagine is a tough act to follow. This event also marks the end of a challenging period during the course of the pandemic, high pressure situations for leaders where we constantly had to react to new circumstances and when many difficult decisions had to be made. But we had strong support from our chairman, from our trustees, from the donors, from our colleagues in the university and the colleges, colleagues in other charities. And this has really lifted and carried us. The difficult times behind us also created new urgency. And I think I can say it even increased the joy in our work. Now that the team is back in our building, we feel so pleased to be able to work together in person, grateful for renewing the personal interactions between us that we took for granted previously. Many have said to me that they feel a sense of renewal, of greater purpose, and we feel more than needed than ever now, um, helping to rebuild and shape our society after the challenges of the past year, the divisions created by Brexit and by COVID, and of course also in light of the latest developments, political developments in, in Israel-Palestine. This renewed and strengthened sense of purpose will guide us forward now, and uh, we're building on strong foundations. Ed's great qualities as a unique blend of intellectual face leadership and entrepreneurial spirit founded the Wolf Institute and helped to create this unique institution. We're always using the phrase punching above our weight, uh, which comes in the shape and form of our magnificent trustees and our generous donors, who go so far beyond what could be ordinarily expected with their overall support and advice. And of course, we could not have been more fortunate than to have benefit, benefited from the unstinting and invaluable support from our royal patron, for which we are, needless to say, but I would nevertheless say it here, immensely grateful. The Wolf Institute's reputation rests upon its excellent researchers. Uh, so I felt I needed to include them here in my speech, given them a bit of my time. And uh, a few members of our Wolf Pack will now introduce themselves to you and say a few words. Your Royal Highness, my lord. Your Royal Highness, my lords, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Julian Hargreaves. I'm the newly appointed Director of Research here at the Wolf Institute. And my job is a fairly simple one, to ensure that we continue to produce first-class research and to apply that research to some of the most important issues facing our faith communities. In order to continue our work, we must develop partnerships. Partnerships with national faith organisations, particularly those which serve Christian, Jewish and Muslim communities. Partnerships with public bodies, such as the Ministry of Defence, the Home Office and the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government. Thank you. Hello everyone, Your Royal Highness. My name is Christopher Ladivia and I serve as an honorary PhD scholar here at the Wolf Institute, as well as a third year PhD candidate in the Cambridge University Faculty of Divinity. And my PhD research has studied how Nigerian Pentecostal churches are investing in social uh, development activities in order to compensate for the developmental shortcomings of the Nigerian state. And so I've been involved with the Wolf Institute for over a year now, and I've really appreciated uh, the opportunity to work in a setting that teaches me the importance of bridging academic research with wider public engagement, and it's been a true pleasure to be uh, involved with the Wolf Pack. So thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Elisa, and I come from Israel, a place that unfortunately now is mired in conflict. I came to the Wolf Institute to learn about a new vision for Jewish-Muslim relations, and currently I am a Wolf Institute PhD scholar. My project as a PhD scholar is called Living in Harmony, and I go around together with the outreach officer Dunya Habash to schools in the UK to talk about music and how Jewish, Muslim, and Christian communities used to live in harmony in the Middle East, and how they can in the future do so. Good morning everybody, my name is Dr. Catherine O'Lone and I have two hats here at the Wolf Institute. My first is as a researcher 
And what I'm interested in researching is does interfaith work? What is the impact that it's actually having in the real world and how can we measure this? The second hat that I wear is as an outreach manager. So what I do is I take the fantastic research that's done here and disseminate it to as wide an audience as possible and not necessarily just an academic one. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Mohammed Ahmed and my research focuses on 7th to 9th century Muslim Jewish relations, so very early Muslim Jewish relations. And this research is very crucial as it focuses uh, and helps us to inform and improve current Muslim Jewish relations, which are often marred by socio and geopolitical conflict. Uh, my research has also enabled me to uh, teach on uh, Wolf Institute teaching programs, including Bridging the Great Divide, a Muslim Jewish Encounter, and Tackling Anti Semitism Within Islam. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And together, we will continue to be a neutral body, brokering trust between communities, a facilitator of difficult conversations, a place of encounter in our beautiful Wolf building, a creator of dialogues, and sometimes we're very happy to say, a maker of lasting friendships. And now I have the pleasure and the honor to introduce Her Royal Highness, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, the Wolf Institute patron, Princess Royale. Thank you, Miriam. Well, firstly, can I say what a pleasure it is to be here and that so many of you are here uh, to underline, I think, what has been achieved uh, at the Wolf Institute, but particularly to say a big thank you to Ed Kessler for his contribution. And I think for all of us, that, that could take quite a long time, so I won't go over everything. Um, I, it, it is patently something that we can all rejoice in, but also know that it's it's not he's not going to go away and all that's been achieved will continue. It's not always easy for any organization. The Wolf Institute has some very important individuals, Lord Wolf himself, your family, and a lot of you who've been here and involved since the early days. But Fred who's been who's seen it grow Getting to the point where you can see far enough in the future to know who it is you want to hand on to is not given to all organisations. And this is a particularly good moment for us to celebrate uh, Dr. Miriam Wagner taking this role on. I'm not quite sure how anybody managed in the last year, but for this institute, it has been really important that it had no gaps, um, that the communications between all the parties was maintained and to support the students who had such an important role to play in the future to maintain the connections with them. So my congratulations and thanks go to all of you here uh, at uh, the Wolf Institute for maintaining those uh, links and coming back so quickly to start as soon as you could uh, in real life. Because whatever we can do online and I'm hugely impressed by those of you who have cracked that and found functioning online works. This institute is, is it's so important that there is face-to-face -face involvement and we all know that that is part of what the institute wanted to do is to bring people together um, from different backgrounds, different faiths, to be able to discuss and talk in a, a relaxed and an informative way. And you can do some of that online, but I think, as um, well, Wolf and I would say, that it's not quite enough. Um, it's a bit too prepared. You need that, that personal touch to really make it work. But for those whose research talks about how the impact is being measured, that is a really difficult subject. But I hope all of you who've been involved have your own gauges, have your own ways of feeling how much has been achieved by the Institute already uh, and the areas in which it, it will continue to do so. Your contribution in terms of putting together experience and understanding of doing reports which are well received because they're well put together, your ability to, to get to the to street level of experience and to translate that into 
uh, reports that will make sense to a whole range, not just academics, politicians, but people who feel that it is about their personal experience in space, which is not always recognized in sometimes quite big bits of research. So we're really grateful for that, particularly, I think, to the report, How We Get Along, which we managed to do in 2019, because I think that struck chords with just an extraordinarily wide range of individuals. People, lots of people could read it and see that it made sense and it recognised their situations. Well, that's no mean achievement uh, to be so widely accepted and not just seen uh, as an academic report, which perhaps didn't touch on known on life itself. I hope that you all feel that sponsors who who join us today with some experience of not having an institute actually physically here. Uh, the difference that, that has made, that it has allowed all of the ambitions that um, well, Wolf had in setting it up and Ed when he joined him can be so much better uh, understood and, and, and focused on through the Institute. But there were the potential that this building has given. And that, weirdly, that the pandemic may have focused a lot more people attention on is what it can do in the future. I believe all the evidence is there. And to Dr. Miriam Wagner, you've been part of that journey. Um, and as I said, she has no real excuses for not knowing what she let herself in for. Um, and <clears throat> those of you here uh, understand that. But these transitions in leadership, they're difficult in an organization which understands itself and where it's going. And never mind in other organizations who find that really rather more difficult uh, to do. So can, we can all look forward, I think, to um, the continuity of the learning process, but the continuity of encouragement that it's people who are important in what the Wolf Institute does. And that depends on all of you here and all of those who supported the Institute. It's your contribution that makes a difference. It's not about just funding a building. It's not just about seeing who's the director, but it's actually your contribution because it's your network and you're taking up those opportunities to join the Institute in what it does that strengthens its whole. So thank you all very much. A huge thank you to Ed and his good lady wife, of course, because that's a lot to put up with over the years. Um, she still hasn't told me quite why they're going to Dublin, but it's not that far away. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get there. Um, and to uh, Miriam, thank you so much for taking it on. And this is only my second visit, but I'm sure there's scope for a lot more because that's what we need. So thank you. And it's a pleasure to see you here and thank you for all of that. Your Royal Highness, thank you for your words of encouragement and support, wisdom and guidance. You've outlined our task very clearly to teach tomorrow's leaders respect for difference whilst being true to their heritage, to make space for people who are different from us. When I look back on the discussion with Lord Wolfe about the possibility of establishing an educational institute 23 years ago, I realize the aspiration then remains applicable now to deliver education that is not just about what we know, but who we are. Atheists tend to think that religion is about God. Of course it is. But if that's all it is, it would hardly explain religion's tenacity, its hold on the human imagination, its capacity both to unite and divide. Religion is also about identity, who we are. It seeks to answer a set of questions that my scientific colleagues here at Cambridge cannot answer. Why am I here? Where do I belong? Of what story am I a part? How should I live? Of course, religion is not the only source of identity. Some find theirs in nationhood, others in their work, some in a cause or in ethnicity. Some even find it in the football team they support. 
But one thing is clear. Identity has become problematic today. The sociologist Peter Berger defined modernity as a state of permanent identity crisis. Many of the secular alternatives to religious identity have proved terrifying in their consequences. Ethnicity led to racism and to the Holocaust, political ideology to communism and fascism. Even football, more harmless than most, can lead to violence. And as for those who deny that identity exists, it's quite hard to be everyone in general without being anyone in particular. And even cosmopolitans tend to be comfortable in the company of other cosmopolitans. Well before the Wolf Institute opened, religion had begun to return to center stage. This made our work relevant then, but now it's become vital. And whilst our, our identity gives us a way of being at home in the world and able to say, this is my story and who I, who, who I am, there is a great danger. Religious identities can be a source of strife, dividing the world into two, us and them. And the question is, can we make space for one another? And the Wolf Institute says, yes, yes, we can. I pay tribute to the leadership of Miriam and Shabir, of our students and scholars, some of whom briefly appeared before you this morning. Mohammed, Julian, Chris, Alyssa and Kitty. You remind us that we discover what it means to be human when we truly see others as human, like us when we appreciate their history, their community, and their values, when we encounter their humanity, when we avoid the trap of demonizing those whom we don't know. And it's in this way that the Wolf Institute fosters an ethic that crosses boundaries, respects strangers, has a way of saying that though we come from diverse backgrounds, we share a moral universe. Without this ethic, there is no society merely the clamor of individuals and the clash of conflicting ghettos, only anger, rage, and a lack of respect. A soft answer turns away wrath, says the book of Proverbs, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Reckless words pierce like the sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. This is as much an intellectual as a religious point. The Islamic philosopher Averroes insisted that truth never fears an honest debate. Aquinas said, beware the man of one book. The Talmud teaches that the views of the school of Hillel were accepted because they taught the views of their opponents as well as their own. So in my final words as your founder director, I thank you all for the privilege of leadership, for your support, particularly to my wife, Tricia. I urge you all, students and staff, trustees and supporters. Build bridges, do not destroy them. Open minds, do not close them. Hear both sides of an argument, not one alone. Foster dialogue, even when others, some of whom are our academic colleagues, may seek to silence it. Right now, we are working with local actors in Jerusalem, exploring ways to safeguard the most contested of holy sites in the most contested of holy cities. Why was I approached two weeks ago by two UN brothers to reach out to the grassroots? Why have Jews, Christians and Muslims in Israel and Palestine responded positively to my request for dialogue? Because they trust us. Not just because of what we know, they trust us for who we are. This is the legacy that you have helped me build since 1998 this is the reason for our success. This is what I have to thank you for, for what you have achieved and for all that we have yet to accomplish. Thank you very much. Your Royal Highness, I'm very pleased, first of all, that you are dressed appropriately for this morning. <laughs> Your Royal Highness, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to offer a few words of thank yous and a brief vote of thanks on this most unique occasion, the passing of the baton from Ed to Miriam, and of course, 
acknowledging the contribution of our founder director to the Wolf Institute. I would like to start, Mom, by making three particular thank yous, but starting with you. Without your support, Mom, we would not be here today. And if, Mom, myself, my predecessor, Lord Blair, our trustees, had not said this loud enough or clear enough, we clearly have some work to do. Thank you so much for everything you have done, for, as Ed said, your direction, your inspiration, and your guidance. Thank you so much, Mom. Mom, next I want to pay tribute, as others would do, to Ed Kessler. The force of nature that designed, tirelessly worked to build and deliver the institute which carries Lord Wolfe's name. Ed, this is quite an amazing accomplishment. Not many people in their lives can say they have delivered on a life's dream, on a project, as you have done. I, I'd go as far as to say that you are now part of a very unique group who can say that you have lived your dream. Well done to you and to Trish as well. Ed, it would be remiss of me not to say on behalf of everyone at The Wolf, past and present, that we will always remain grateful to you. In fact, no amount of words can do justice to that sentiment. Thank you once again. Thirdly, Mom, I want to also uh, add my warmest acknowledgement to our director, Miriam, Dr. Wagner. Miriam. Miriam has assumed the role of director with her usual passion and her unique skill set. And if I might say so, the mantle of director seems to have fitted her perfectly. Miriam, on behalf of all our trustees, thank you to you and your team for doing such a fabulous job in this last year, especially with the onset of COVID. Thank you so much. Mom, as I wrap up, again, it would be wrong for me not to acknowledge, as you have done, the supporters that we've had over the years, some of whom are here today and others who are unable to be here today. They have helped us, they have helped Lord Wolf build this fantastic institute. And as current chair, it's, it's really an honor for me to say thank you to all of you for what you have done. Um, I really must stress this, and I must say that you have made all of this possible for us. Thank you for trusting us, and thank you for following us so much. We really appreciate it. Mom, I'm going to end by saying to you once again, your presence today means a lot to us, and I hope we will be seeing you back in Cambridge again. We wish you well for the rest of the day, uh, notwithstanding dealing with the complexities of the British weather, um, a challenge which was beyond even our team <laughs> at the Wolf to fix for you, Mom. I hope you have a very wonderful day in Cambridge today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.